Every generation has their great orators. The 40s gave us Churchill, the 60s JFK and Dr King, and arguably President Reagan in the 1980s. Perhaps the greatest orator and public speaker of today is former US President Barack Obama. Last week I had the opportunity to meet and speak with him and ask him what advice he would give on how to be a great speaker. Now, while I don't want to go into too much detail about our private conversation, he did impress upon me the importance of using humour when we speak. Indeed, later that evening, I watched and listened as he put what he said into practice when he gave an inspiring 60-minute talk to an audience of business executives, politicians, authors, musicians and entrepreneurs. The topic he spoke on was a serious one, the changing nature of work, the environment and migration. Like any great speaker, you could sense the speech structure and scaffolding he was building his ideas on. It was a speech light on statistics, but very heavy on rhetoric and vision. He also made full use of dynamics in the tone, pacing and story arc of his speech. However, it was his use of humour and space that made him not just a good speaker, but a great speaker. At the beginning of his talk, he broke the ice and endeared himself with the audience by praising their country and its people. Throughout his speech, he would use a few well-rehearsed humorous lines to counterbalance what would have been an otherwise heavy and difficult topic. However, it was at the end, during the Q&A session with Sir Tom Hunter, where he really opened up and you recognised that someone who was once the most powerful man on earth was also vulnerable. He had his good days and his bad. And like all of us, he tried to make the best decisions on often incomplete information. Although President Obama impressed upon me in both our private conversation and when he was up on stage, the power of humour, it was his use of space and pauses that was my number one takeaway. During his speech, he paused often to both add power to what he had just said and also to allow the audience to process what he was saying. It reminded me of that Miles Davis quote where Miles said, it's not the notes you play, it's the notes that you don't. By using the dramatic pause, it made the audience do a little bit of work by filling in the blanks so you felt like you'd arrived at the meaning of a story without him actually having to say it. If my friend and keynote speaker Frederick Haran was sitting in the audience with me, he would have described Obama's inner theme as being change. Change is what he spoke about during his presidential elections and change is what he talks about today, albeit in relation to things like automation, artificial intelligence, machine learning and the future of work. Finally, in President Obama's talk, I heard echoes of the speech structures of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He would begin by finding something all the audience agreed on. Next, he'd present them with a challenge and then end up with a motivational call to action and rallying call, which hopefully made the listener feel as if some transformation had occurred in them. As a keynote speaker myself, I love studying what other speakers do. As speakers, our words have power. They really do have the ability to change and transform. Use them wisely and find ways to add more humor and space to your speeches. Thanks for watching. Did you enjoy that video? If so, there's three things that you can do so we can continue the journey together. The first is to click on the button to subscribe to this channel to get more amazing creativity videos like this. The second is you can get my free book on creativity by just clicking on the image here. And the third thing you can do is watch other videos in this series. Thanks for watching.